I think cultural change is something that a lot of organisations aspire to, but it's really, really difficult to achieve. Daria Lane Group went on an interesting journey over the last few years. They realised that they had to separate from RBS Group. And when they wanted to separate, they also said, actually, we want to have a culture that we're really, really proud of, where everybody, everybody's part of that culture, everybody's part of shaping that culture. We're really focused on the customer as well. So we started a journey over two years ago where we actually really asked our people, what kind of business do you want to work for that would be best for customers, best for employees and best for shareholders? And through a whole series of interact, interactive conversations, people began to think about what's the values of this organisation. But it's more impactful if you bring those values to life. And one of the ways we brought that to life was through a lot of the work we did in uh, Lean Transformation, where we, we began to shape our business by listening to our people, what frustrated them, what frustrated our customers. And we began to take action as a result of, of what our people said and did. But it all has to link to purpose, you know, without uh, having a common purpose that everybody can engage with, with their hearts and minds, that will never actually change. So having a leadership team at the executive that said, actually, we want to be the best general insurer was quite, was quite empowering and quite inspiring. And that was a journey we, we went on. But again, a big part of that is the credibility of how you do the change. The leadership role modelling is really, really important that actually you're living by how do you make sure you're emp empowering people to be best for employees and best for customers as well. It's all about are they living the values. It's not just what they deliver, it's how they deliver it. And that's really, really important. But by doing that, you're really embedding a new set of values that are at the heart of cultural change. I think if you're really trying to embed change, you actually have to, have to demonstrate you mean it. Uh, and that means that you have to look for leaders who are willing to role model a different way of, of leading. So from, from the past, quite a lot of leaders would say, I've been doing this job for 10, 15 years. I know what the problems are. You just have to fix it. That's not really the culture you want to be involved in, it's not empowering. What you really want is leaders that are willing to understand problems as opportunities and really coach their people to solve those problems. The great thing is when that happens is that people become more empowered and that the culture becomes embedded that actually this is an organisation that wants to problem solve to impact positively the customer experience. And when you begin to do that, the values begin to come to life because you're looking at change at all levels. You're looking for your people to change and lead differently and you're looking for your management te uh, team to lead, uh, lead differently as well. And that's when you begin to really em embed the values. I think uh, for me, I I'm really passionate about seeing people achieve a potential they never thought possible. But not just people, it's teams and businesses. And it's great when you can see a business really flying because it's really engaged its people to be all they can be. And it's fantastic when you see that transformation because suddenly people have got a strength and an ability they didn't think. You know, they now can lead differently, they can problem solve differently. And as a result of all of that, they're more motivated, the business is more successful. It's fantastic when you see it happening. For me, business transformation is all about actually finding out the measure of success as you go through the project, being open to how good a project could be by actually going through the project itself, thinking about, okay, is the context changing? Is the business situation changing? Are we getting even better ideas as we go through it? That for me is transformation and that's what's really exciting. So starting on a journey where actually the end is going to be even better than you thought at the start. I think the great thing about continuous improvement is the skill set is transferable between any industry as long as you've got the right attitude. Uh, one thing that we look for when we're recruiting a continuous improvement team is to make sure you're not the prisoner of the past. Some people who are really good at continuous improvement understand a model of change, but the worst thing they can do is look to always apply the same model. What we're looking for when we're recruiting people is people who really listen to the business understand the business problem and think about what continuous improvement techniques they can use or develop to help that business be successful. But those questions that a great continuous improvement person would have around what is the customer value, where's the waste in what we do, how do we get to the root cause, how do we look at problems from an end-to-end -end perspective, these questions are important to any industry. I've never seen an industry that wouldn't benefit from some of those questions. I think some of the challenges are about thinking about what people that are coming through industry now are looking for. There's always different mindsets of expectation about you know, longevity in your career or loyalty to an organisation or even you know, is this, is this organisation I'm working with uh, focused on the environment? And then the reaction to the economy as well is always going to be different. So how, how are we going to react to that and be agile to that rather than think we've always got to do change the way we've always done it? How do we become far more agile to think about what's important to the people we work with and more importantly what's important to the customers that we're trying to serve? You know, being really open-minded to all aspects of, you know, what does your customer really think of you and where are they having those conversations? It might be in social media, it might be through your customer relations department. There's a lot of things they need to think about. I think the other thing is that um, a lot of people think about how do we improve our business based on what we do and what our competitors do. 
customers base their best experience of customer experience on whatever they've seen as being the best. I think uh, to, to really transform to be a customer focused business you need to really understand what the customer values and you don't just do that by assuming you know what the customer values, really ask what the customer values and go out there and observe what you, what you see with any customer action interaction with your business and then begin to think about how you run your business from a complete end-to-end -end experience for the customer. What does the customer want from your business and put it in the language of the, of the customer as well. Then begin to look at your business and say, okay, so if that's what the customer wants, how do we organize ourselves? What processes do we conform to do that? And how do we provide that service? Invariably, most businesses work in silos and there's loads of handoffs between those different uh, fun functions before they actually give the service to the customer. And that's opportunities for error, opportunity for frustration for the customers, but it's also the opportunity for delight if you can get it really right because you're thinking about the customer experience from an end-to-end -end perspective. That's when it becomes really powerful. And if you get the whole organisation thinking that way, they're always thinking about the customer from an end-to-end -end experience that's really, really important to drive a different level of change in your business. I think uh, being involved in business transformation, one of the things you've really got to think about is what's your role as a leader. And one of the most powerful things I learned as a leader is that the role of a leader is to develop other great leaders. If you're involved in transformation, one of the things you've got to do is stay curious. How can you improve things? What's your impact in a situation? Curious as to why people might be resisting change. Curiosity is an absolute strength. Uh, I think you've really got to try and understand and be able to listen to a business, understand what the challenges are and empathise in a way that thinks actually we can work in this to be a success together. It can't be about a, a change programme that's going to be successful. In fact, I actually really don't like calling change programmes change programmes. The, the reality is what you're trying to do is, is help the business be more successful. Too many organisations always think about we need to set up a project to change things. Actually, we just need to empower people to be the best they can be. And we need to empower people to look for opportunities for improvement.